Okay, welcome back. So, last uh, lecture we were talking about the plunging fold. Now, the importance here is that uh, uh, all uh, is of the fold axis. Okay, if the fold axis is inclined, uh, then we will call this as a plunging fold, and if the fold axis is horizontal, we will say non plunging fold. Okay, and this is extremely important because we need to un, uh, know that uh, where to put tunnel, and if suppose you are you are planning to put tunnel here then the tunnel will go through and through uh, across this uh, uh, bed here. Okay. But uh, if you are coming across the, the plunging fold, then your tunnel will last up to this only, where here you can go across this one. Okay. So, that is very important in, uh, in civil engineering also for us in geology uh, or the earth sciences, it is extremely important, because we, we need to understand the evolution of the folds. So, this is very important for us also. Okay. So, the attitude of the fold axis or the hinge line is defined by two measurements that is the bearing, uh, the strike what we call and its projection, the inclined or it is horizontal. Okay. So, this we uh, will talk about very quickly. So, if the fold axis is inclined, then we term that as a plunging fold. So, this has been represented like this and uh, can be plotted on a studio net that we will see in, uh, very quickly in the next one. So, here what we are adding is we are adding more attitude. Earlier, we, we just had a strike of the, uh, the actual uh, plane or the uh, fold axis, but now we are having also the, the inclination. So, this has been added here and if you have this inclination with respect to the horizontal, then you term that as a plunging fold. So, here is an example of the plunging fold, where you, you can see that there is a fold here. So, from the front, you can make out that there is a fold, but if you go further dip in, the, in this direction then you, you see that it is dying out. Okay. So, this is an example on this uh, on the section, if you look at the plunging folds will die out at a, uh, at a distance if you travel, okay. they will not extend further. Okay. So, accordingly you can, so, but, but on this face or the section you see a very beautiful folds which have been developed. So, you may get confused, okay. but one can sort out very easily if you are having the dip and strike of the, the beds or the limbs you are having that can help you in identifying the whether there is a plunging fold or not. Okay. This is another important uh, part, where uh, uh, we talk about the, uh, the difference in the, uh, the, the strength of the layers or the strata or the beds, where we have like incompetent beds, two incompetent beds and in between squeezed is your incompetent bed. Then during the folding, this incompetent bed will slip okay. and that is extremely dangerous, because you may say that the competent beds uh, no, no folding will take place and no slippage will occur, but the incompetent beds or the layers will have problems. Okay. They will slip and they will result into the displacement of the, the layers. Okay. So, this type of folds are formed when competent bed slides over the incompetent one. Okay. So, they are minor folds confined to the limbs of the major folds. Okay. So, they will not, they will, you will not be able to see this type of folds on a very large scale, but they are within the the folded layers. Okay. So, you are having and they will they will slip like this. Okay. So, you will have that what we call the drag folds. Okay. So, these are the drag folds. Then uh, chevron folds, okay. they are again multi layered uh, in the you will see in the multi layered rocks okay, complexes, regular alteration of competent and incompetent layers again of the thickness uh, T 1 and T 2 respectively, if you take the thickness of these beds here. Okay. And then, uh, with the high ductile, uh, ductile ductility, okay, the, in the compressional regime, they will uh, result into the formation of chevron folds, and they will have the tip that is very, will be very uh, sharp. Okay. So these are the hinge, what we call the hinge. Okay, the, the the upper crust or the hinge lines or the hinges are very sharp and angular in shape, or it is it goes up to the angle of around 60 degrees. Okay. So, this is an example of the chevron folds, you can see this hinge lines are very much sharp here, okay. all the so are very sharp. There is another example and here you can see this is slightly bent in the uh, in the actual plane okay. and then there is an there is some slide of 
displacement over here what we call as an fault. Okay. So, this is, an, this is an example of chevron fold and the previous one was dragging track folding. Okay. Now, in the, on the topographic maps also you can uh, easily make out that how uh, the landforms are like the folded areas can be looked at. Okay. So, if you if you look carefully the contour values and all that and then spacing also between the different contours one can make out that what whether this is in. So, this here they are very closely spaced whereas, here they are slightly widely spaced. Okay. So, these are the uh, the escarpment or the limb of the fold and this is either the, the top or the basin part. Okay. But you can if you can see here this is around 7000 feet or either meter and then there you are having this is 6800 this goes to uh, 6000. So, the height is higher here and then it reduces further down. Okay. So, this could be like uh, the step limb, limb of one of the uh, the fold. Okay. And then again you are having 5900 here, then you are having 6000 and then you are having 7000. Okay. So, what we see here if you look at the cross section here, then you have 7000, then you are having the lesser one, then you are having again lesser one, then again slowly you are increasing. Okay. So, this is what you are having the the syncline here. So, this two points are 7000 here uh, what we see in the cross section and then somewhere here is your 5900 and then again you are getting up into 6000. Okay. 6000 you got here also. Okay. So, this is this is what we can say that this is an syncline, but this part is quite steep here. Okay. So, this is this side is an anticline and then other side this one is your synclinal valley. Again, these are the few uh, very important structures which are related to the anticline and syncline. So, if you are having anticline uh, uh, structures here and if they are they are eroded on the surface, then what you see is that uh, the drainages are, are, uh, are flowing away from the center. Okay. Whereas, here if you are having the basin or the syncline, then the drainage is uh, moving towards the center okay. and the dip if you see has been shown here okay, with the smaller one. So, dip are like this, this is the strike and this is the dip direction, this is the strike and this is the dip direction. So, they are dipping towards uh, uh, each other. So, you are having the syncline here, whereas here similarly you are having the anticline which are dipping outside. Okay. So, these are termed as this landforms which are associated with this where you are having the, the older strata at the center. Okay. Older strata is at the center when the younger stratas are surrounding the older one. Whereas, here what you see is that you are having the younger stratas in and the older stratas out. Okay. So, this is an this is what is the difference between this two. Okay. So, these are been termed as basin okay, and this is these are termed as the domes. Okay. Further, if the old this is another term which has been given as inlayer and outlier. So, if the older formations or the rocks are surrounded by the younger rocks, then they are termed as inliers. Okay. So, older rocks surrounded by younger rocks. So, this is your domal part which you are having the uh, inliers. Okay. Whereas, this one is the younger rocks, we are having younger rocks are surrounded by the older rocks. So, older rocks are on the outside here periphery, then what we say this as an old outliers. Okay. So, we are having inliers and outlier which are associated with the anticline and syncline or we can say with the domes and basins. Okay. So, these are inliers and these are outliers. Okay. So, this also again you can uh, you should remember about that okay. and one can identify this based on the, the drainage also. Okay. So, this is another uh, uh, feature which is mostly associated with the, uh, the larger folds what we call uh, uh, the mega folds. So, these folds are generally a part of the large fold that is uh, we term that as an anticlonarium or synclonarium and they are been seen associated along the within the limb of the uh, the major uh, folds. Okay. So, they are the smaller folds where again these have been termed as anticline and synclines that we are having, but they are termed as anticlonarium and synclonarium okay. and they extend for several kilometers okay, along the the major large folds. Okay. So, folds are generally part of the large fold system. Example, this is a mega uh, fold system Himalaya and major large system, uh, major uh, system anticline comprises many smaller 
uh, size fold called anticlonary um, and the large synclines and the smaller folds associated with that they are termed as synclonary. Okay. This is an example of uh, uh, that how the, the uh, this folded sections are been represented on the um, on the geological maps. Okay. So, these are the, the folded beds which are been shown here. So, if you add here with the, the depth direction and the, the strike direction, you can easily make out or you can draw the sections also in this. Okay. So, plunging fold again coming back. So, we are talking about that how we can plot this and know that whether it is an plunging or not. So, we will just move ahead with that. So, this is what we use is this stereographic position. It is nothing but it is a uh, globe like uh, uh, like uh, uh, stereo uh, graphic projection which has been given and which uh, uh, is again representing the uh, your uh, uh, coordinates okay, or coordinate system that is the lat latitude and longitude and that is how they are been given. So, this is what we call is the uh, the wolf net we are having. Okay. So, this is the wolf net. Uh, which is again equal areas. Now, you are having uh, uh, different lines along uh, um, on the circle. Okay. So, you are having one is the, uh, the what we call the uh, darker lines here and then we are having the lighter ones here. Okay. So, we are having those lines here and then we are having few lines which are been seen cross cutting like it is running east to west where they are running uh, north to south. Okay. So, north to south are our longitude, they are uh, representing the great circles, they are representing your longitudes and then smaller circles here or here they are representing the latitudes here. Okay, fine. And the center is the east west is your uh, equator. So, this is the representation of that. So, what we see here the plotting of the attitudes of the rocks. Okay. So, we have the strike and we have the depth. So, we can plot that on the, the stereo net and try to understand that what type of fold those limbs are associated with. Okay. So, stereographic net is a projection of latitude, latitudinal and longitudinal lines on a sphere. Okay. This net uh, is known as wolf net, okay. stereograph, wolf net stereograph, which exhibits divided area of equal angle. Okay. So, this all are representing angle. Okay. So, this is 0 and this is 90 degrees here and this is your uh, 180, this is your 270 back to 0 here or you can say it is 360. Okay. So, this is what you are having the representation of the of the uh, equal angle and this all are like equal angle. So, we are having this as an uh, like uh, this is 90 here and you can say 80 then uh, 70 and so on. Okay. Now, why this is important and how we can make out whether uh, uh, the um, the fold is plunging or not. Okay. Let us see. So, the lighter lines what we are having inside is equal to 2 degrees where the darkers are representing 10 degree. Okay. So, this all are 10 degrees here, this one, this one is 10 degree whereas, the inner one the lighter lines are all your 2 degrees. Okay. So, we have uh, like for example, we will collect the, the information from the field and then we can plot it on the, the stereo units. Okay. So, stereographic projections displays geometries and orientation of the lines and planes. Okay. So, that is the strike and dip of the planes and it is used for solving apron dip. So, if you are having apron dip, so you can you can easily make out and try to uh, identify the true dip also of that area. Okay. Then uh, uh, trends and plunge of the intersecting planes with the help of that you can make out that whether it is in plunging fold or non plunging fold sorry. So, what we will look at. Okay. So, suppose we are having an inclined plane here and that need to be projected on the stereographic projection then what you will do is that you will you will uh, project on this is what we call the uh, the, the plane or the center of the hemisphere. So, we are having a plane area and this has been projected on the uh, on the flat uh, or, or, or the flat surface that is what we, we call the stereographic projection. Okay. So, the uh, the image imagine that the plane passing through this one or this, this plane what we see here is passing through the center of this 
uh, and uh, the, the hemisphere, then how they will be, it will be projected on the flat circular plot. Okay. So, this will be representing your, uh, this is your the plane on the circle here. Okay. So, this plane is like this is your strike here and this is your uh, depth what you are having of the plane. Okay. So, with respect to, so this is an angle here. So, that what you have projected on the, the flat circular plot. Okay. Now, taking this very quickly, we will look at and you can do one, one, one of the exercise will be given to you. Now, we are having uh, uh, the, the attitude of the one plane. Okay. So, for example, we are having here. So, what we have is the, uh, we have, uh, this is your strike that is 40 degree and then we are having the, uh, the dip direction and then we are having amount of dip. Amount of dip is uh, 45 degrees and then we are having the, uh, the dip direction is 130 uh, with respect to north. Okay. So, and we are having this 140 degrees. So, what we need to plot is that we need to plot that with respect to north, uh, this is your 40 degrees which is coming here. Okay. Okay. So, with respect to north we are moving. So, this will be your uh, strike here, okay, which is passing to the center of the, the flat uh, uh, plot or the projection. Okay. And then amount of dip you are having again, it is, it, it is dipping in uh, like towards 130. So, this will be your uh, 130. And then you are having that dip is amount as around 40 degrees. So that has been measured from the from the outer circle uh, towards the center here. Okay. So let us see how we can we can project this on this one. Okay, on the stereo stereo projection. So pole. Uh, uh, this is this is what has been. And then if you take this uh, from this point 90 degree, 90 degrees. So you can you can take this 90 degrees. That will be your pole, uh, which you represent on the intersecting. Part, okay. So, that is the, uh, that will give you all information about the, the planes and all that. Okay. So, to know the concentration of the strike and various beds. So, if you just plot the pole, that will also help you in uh, knowing the, the strike and depth of the, the beds. Okay. So, if in most of the stereographic projection, what has been done is that you have uh, the poles which are plotted and the concentration of the pole, pole will tell you whether the, the what what is the what are the uh, the maximum strike okay or the concentration of the uh, the strike of the beds or the direction of the beds and the what is the inclination of the beds here so coming to this if you see carefully this one this will explain you that how it has been projected this is the, the how the pole has been projected so you are having the inclined plane here and that is uh, from that point you are taking 90 degrees and then you are put, putting that pole here. Okay. So, that is the point that is the pole is representing the point and complete data of strike and depth here. Okay. So, the next uh, part we will see that how if you are having two beds, how you are plotting those. Okay. So, for example, we are having the, uh, the fold and we have two, two beds which are having attitudes that is having the strike and the depth. Okay. So, one is like uh, we have uh, uh, this that is 340 uh, 34 degrees and then we have, so this is your strike, this is your uh, amount of depth and this is your uh, depth direction. Okay. And similarly, the another one we are having is around this one. Okay. So, let us see how we can plot this one okay, very clearly. So, attitude of beds, one limb is uh, oriented in uh, this one that is 325 degrees, uh, 70 degrees northeast and another one we can also say this one is north 20 degrees okay, and 40 degrees you are having north west. Okay. So, this is again another, another plane we are having. So, if we, uh, so in this case the strike of the fold axis will be at 334. Okay. So, this is the, sorry this one what uh, has been given is the, is the strike of the, the fold. So, this is, this is the, the uh, the strike of the fold. Okay, this, the, so we are having two beds here. One is the blue line, and this is your uh, red line here. Okay, so let us see how we can plot this one. Okay, so let me remove this one quickly, and then we can see. Okay, so we have one that is what we have marked is north twenty degrees. Okay, or you can sorry, this one we can take first. That is the 
325 okay so this we have taken this is 325 degrees okay we have taken the mark and then what we will do is we will try to measure the the depth okay and since this is our east quadrant so we will move this uh, uh, mark parallel to this one okay that is to north okay so what we have done and when we will measure this one so so we have moved this parallel to the north and then we have marked the outer line that is this one this is 70 degree northeast so this we have marked from here so we'll start from the, this is in the northeast so north from the from the east we will go in this direction so that will give you that plane will give you the uh, the plane of your fold okay and if you mark this so this will be your strike okay this will be your strike here so then you move back and this will uh, will be left out with you okay so this will go off okay so this you are having the one plane you got okay that is with 70 degrees okay and then another one you have you are marking that is 20 degrees so not 20 degree so you have 10 and 20 here again you are having this amount of depth is 40 degrees which is a northwest okay so you have to go in this quadrant so this is your west and again you have taken uh, 10 20 30 and 40 here okay so you have taken this again you will uh, move this towards north and then bring it parallel to this one here okay this one here and that will give you the the plane here okay so you are getting this plane so again you are getting another one that is the blue plane you are getting and you will get this uh, the information here okay so again you move back uh, in the same fashion bring your uh, uh, north which was been initially marked so you when you start this you bet it is better to mark the north uh, south and east west okay so that will help you in bringing back the uh, your tracing and this has been done on the tracing sheet so you will put the stereo net and you can do this on the tracing sheet so you can bring it back and then what what you have is that you see that the the two limbs okay which you have drawn are not intersecting along the outer circle okay they are intersecting within that so this means that it has some short of an attitude okay so this is an fold axis because when we were talking about the the intersection this what we have drawn is the intersection of the two planes okay so this is your fold axis now either the fold axis is vertical or the fold axis is inclined okay or it is plunging or not plunging okay that we can make out easily so what uh, you got is that if you if you again bring this at the center here and then again you measure okay so this will be your uh, the the direction this this is your fold axis here you you got and then amount of dip you can measure from here when you bring it on the on the on the center okay that will give you the amount of dip so when you bring this whole part here because you have the the center here and then you can measure the from the center here that how much is the the amount so that that gave this 30 degree and since you are again putting back so this is in the western side so you will say this is dipping towards northwest okay so that is what you have done here okay so you 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 were able to measure with the help of two limbs okay and the the intersection not along the the outer circle then you have named that uh, you have you have calculated the the strike you got the strike you got the amount of tip and then you got the direction of tip of the uh, the fold axis here okay so this is your fold axis so there are some uh, symbols which you can go through so which indicates the strike and dip and mostly you will find this type of symbols on the uh, on your geological maps okay so you are having horizontal you are having incline you are having syncline okay you have overturn folds you are having strike and dip of the foliations this is related to the metamorphic rocks which we were talking about the foliated and non foliated rocks then you are having the strike and dip of the inclined joints and they are having vertical joints then you are having horizontal joints then you are having anticline with overturned folds then syncline with overturned folds okay and then you are having the plunging anticlines okay so if you are having uh, uh, this symbols which are been given then you can easily make out 
that what is the plunge amount and what is the plunge axis and into which direction it is plunging. Okay. So, these are some of the symbols which have been given which you can study from the slides okay. and I uh, will stop here and uh, I would like to start a new topic. Uh, hopefully, we have enough time to complete that also. So, we will we'll talk about the faults. Okay. So, we have been talking about the fold folds and we talked about the different type of folds, but now the important part which is there which we talk about the, the faults. Okay. So, please remember the different type of uh, folds which we have talked about, about the anticline, syncline, about the plunging fold, non-plunging folds, how to measure it using the stereographic uh, projection and then you can talk about or uh, this uh, uh, based on the slides and the notes. You, you learn about the symmetrical fold, asymmetrical folds and then Overton folds, recumbent folds, chevron folds and then you can talk about, you learn about the, uh, the drag folds and also the isoclinal uh, folds also or monoclinal folds. So, these are the different type of folds. So, based on everything is dependent on the, uh, the fold axis or you can say the in which direction the, fold, uh, the limbs are dipping and at what angle. Okay as we have talked about the open fold, close fold, tight folds also. So, you can learn all this. Okay. I will stop here. Thank you so much.